So today we're going to strip all the parts off of our donor cab here for our Sierra Denali. Take off the molding up on the top, it just pops off and then the clips come off separately and then you just push them back into the molding and then they just push on. Take the door gasket off, we're going to need that. We're going to cut off more than I actually need. It takes a little more time this way but in the long run it'll save me time over the weekend when time is limited. We're going to clean the caulk out of the rear seam so we can see our spot welds to drill out. Take out the window urethane for the rear window. Make sure you use a dull razor blade like I did. Now we're going to take some measurements before we cut this apart. This will help us align the new pieces. This will give me the side to side measurements. This will give me front to back on the inside pieces. I have other measurements that manufacturers provide, but it never hurts to have extras. So I always take some when I have the parts. Now we can measure this outer piece. That'll give us our front to back distance. I write it down in this notebook, description of what I measured and the distance. Now this will give us a cross measurement. It'll give us our height and our distance. Cross measurements are always better because it gives you two planes instead of just one. Now I'm going to scribe anything I'm taking apart. This is not an exact science, but it will get me close to where the new pieces are going to go. So I have a starting point. Sometimes it's right on, but every car is different. Now we can start drilling out our spot welds. This is a spot weld drill. It's great if you can use it on seams like this. It puts pressure on the spot welds itself and drills them out. The tip is a flat tip, so you drill through the panel you're trying to cut off and not into the panels underneath. It has a depth gauge on it that I don't use because it doesn't really work that great. So as you squeeze the trigger, it just pushes the bit out and drills the holes. We're just taking out the unicide right now. I'm going to leave the inner structure all together because I'm not sure how I'm going to put it in. Now we're going to use our favorite tool. I found an excuse. If I cut this panel off, that I'm not going to need anyway. I can get that other drill in there. Right now I'd have to use a regular drill. And I'm lazy. We'll just cut these pieces out. And we can get in there with the drill. Do the same thing on the roof. By doing this too, instead of working with that whole roof panel, we work with just a little scrap at the end. It makes it a little easier to take it off after we drill the spot welds out. You're working with just a little strip. So the time it takes to cut that off, which isn't much, you end up saving in the long run. So now we'll chisel out the spot welds. They do make a specific tool for this, but sometimes repurposed tools make the best tools. That was an old wood handled scraper that the wood handle broke and became my spot weld breaker. So when you get enough of it off, you can kind of just wiggle it. I saw blood in my future, so we're going to stop this and go get some gloves so we can be a little more violent. Trim off the edge. Now the roof skin is off. Now we'll draw out those other spot welds that were in the back cab panel. And 
can. If you could just yank it off of there, it's a lot easier than chiseling out all the spot welds. Comes off cleaner too. We're gonna take that inside piece apart. Right inside there is glue or structural adhesive. So you can heat it up like I do sometimes, or you can just chisel it. We're gonna go with the chisel method. Get all of our spot welds off and then we'll go on to the glue. It's pretty tough stuff. Sometimes as strong as welds. That's the blue stuff. So now we can take the rest of it off. If you drill the spot weld centered, they usually pop right off. These are pretty easy. I'll just go all around the rear door opening. Onto the front door opening. I'm gonna take the whole piece off on the bottom because the inner structure, I, this time, I hadn't checked the repair procedure to see if I could section it or if I had to put the entire piece in. So I'm going to cut the entire piece out. After I check the repair procedure, sectioning is allowed so I don't have to use it, but this way I'll have more than I need. I'm just going to cut off the rest of it. I definitely won't need anything this high. And the inner piece doesn't go up this high. Now the seam sealer is holding it on. So we'll just heat it up. Probably a little hotter than it should have been, but I didn't care. We're not going to end up using that piece anyway. we got to be a little more careful on this piece because we are going to use it. So we'll just warm it up enough to break the sealer loose. That's free. And we'll cut the top piece off. our cab up a little bit so that we can get the unicide off. I was actually sitting on the bottom edge. So now we just kind of pull it off. Not heavy, it's just awkward. There's a little damage on the back, but now that it's off, we can hammer it out, keep the body work to a minimum. I'm just going to cut further in than I need. I'll have plenty left over. I don't want to take all these individual pieces apart because I'll put them in in the biggest pieces possible. I'll have to see what comes out and what doesn't when I pull the other one. So this is a public service announcement. There's some repairable vehicle dealers out there doctoring up cars just like my mistake truck was done. And I think they're reading out of the same handbook because a lot of the stuff that they do is pretty much the same. I'm not gonna name names, but you might be able to figure out who it is. And they're out on the West Coast. If I've heard of them and I'm in the Midwest, it's pretty bad. This guy that bought this truck actually bought another one that was doctored up as well. Why he went back for a second one, I don't know, some people don't learn. This truck ended up costing him more than a brand new one with a clear title would have cost him. And it took him about two years to get it. If you watch any of my older videos, it's the white 15 Silverado that's always sitting in the background in the shop. So this is the leftover cab from it. I'll show you what they did to it. When he bought it, all he thought it needed, 
two doors and a fender. You ended up needing a complete front end, two doors, a cab, a bedside, and a rear bumper. Plus airbags, seat belts, headliner, seats, dashboard. It was pretty bad. So they pulled the A-pillar out. You can see the elongated holes there where they were pulling. They tore it a little bit. And the reason they did that was to put a door on it to make it look a little better. That was the rocker. They're pulling all that out, or at least trying. And here's what they were really hiding. That's the floor. And that's the cowl. So that pillar, that cowl, all need to be replaced. It's cheaper and easier just to put a cab on it. But there's a lot of labor involved and they were trying to hide all that. So that's how they did it. Now they love to put windshields in these things to make it look a little better. So you can see how much urethane is there. They just kind of balled it up there in the corner. About an inch and a half thick. And the windshield they put in was even broke. But I imagine the original one was probably pretty bad. So they put the other one in. Just so you would think it was from the accident. When they took the pictures, they took them down low so that you couldn't see a lot of this. They had a clamp on the back door trying to pull it forward so it would open and close. The dash was destroyed. It was, it was pretty bad. Now we're going to pull our bed off. So we'll take the fuel cap off, disconnect it from the fuel door so that we can put it back on, keep the system sealed up. Take out the three screws for the filler neck, push it down in there. Now we're going to have to cut out this lower section of the bedside here. It's pushed up underneath the bolts for the bed, so we got to get it out of our way. And it's an excuse to use my favorite tool. And get a little more dirt off the truck. out the support brackets a little bit or they're gonna get snagged on the bed mounts on the frame and we can unbolt the bed more dirt these are a little different than the 15 instead of having a junction block they just have individual plugs the tabs don't quite work like they're supposed to. They're all full of dirt, so you just gotta kinda stick a pick in there and pry them out. And we'll tuck them up inside the bed so they don't snag on anything when we lift the bed off. Pull some more of the bolts out. be amazing if my camera survives this build. It's getting quite dirty. Now the rear bed bolts require a long extension to go through the frame. Make sure the bed's loose. I'm ready to take it off. 
we're gonna lift it off. We got a rag in there to keep it from scratching the bedside on the bumper. And just someone to help you make sure it doesn't scrape the back of the cab. Just lift it off enough to drive the truck up from under it. Put on our little cart so we moved around the shop. We'll end up taking it off the cart to put the bedside on later, but at least now we can move it around. Take out our bed lift. And get it out of our way. Now we're gonna get the door open. Get to the latch and see why it's not working. Might have something to do with that little dent. Disconnect the door handle and pull the door skin off. So now we're going to give it a little pull, put it on the intrusion beam, it's the strongest part. So just give it a little tug out. And the latch works, it's just kind of wedged in there. Everything's kind of folded over. You can loosen up the front door latches too, make it a little easier on yourself. I like to struggle. Now it's free, but the door panel is wedged in there. It's on the other side, so I just had to pry it around. It's no good anyway, so it doesn't matter if I mess it up. Take the door check out so we can close the door to take it off. Now we're going to disconnect the door. Just pull the rubber boot out. Get a pick in there. Don't poke any holes in it. And just work it out around the black plastic. And you push the tabs up on the top and the bottom. You can try that with the rubber boot on there, but it doesn't always work. Just pull the pink tab down and that releases everything. Now we can unbolt the door. Now we're going to pull the cover for the DEF tank off. Oh look, more dirt. And extra bolts. For everyone that thinks those manufacturers are so perfect, leave extra bolts in your car. Take the running board off. Now we're going to pull the seat pillar out a little bit. The wiring harness is pinched in there and we, I want to get it out, make sure it's okay. Got to pry it out a little bit, get a better look at the damage. I'll pull it out a little bit so I can see what's in there. And I guess that's far enough. 
So like this video if you found it interesting. Share it if you think somebody else might. Subscribe if you want to see more of this build. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.